Let's take a look at how to use the color picker inside of Pages. Now the color picker works the same inside of all OS X applications. We're going to look at it at Pages though. I'm going to make a new shape here in Pages. I'm going to make a square. I'm going to leave a square in the center of my document, make it a little bit larger so we can look at it. Now the default color picker looks like this. I'll move it over next to my square. We'll see that I've got a center circle, and the center circle is my range of colors, and then the slider on the side is my shade of those colors. And so if I wanted to pick a color, all I'd have to do, just very simply, say I want our color in the red spectrum, so I'm going to click on the red, and then I can drag the slider down until I get the color that I want. Now at this point, uh, it's very easy to apply this color to the image. All I have to do is drag from this box into the shape, and I can drag onto any element inside of pages. I can also come back here, uh, choose any other color, and as I have this color up here at the top, I can drag these down to the spaces at the bottom. And that space at the bottom there is a color picker. It lets you come back to these colors later on. So I'm going to put this color here. Uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring up the magnifying glass. The magnifying glass lets us sample colors from anything else in the operating system. I can sample from a photograph, I can sample from the desktop, I can sample from the application itself. I'm going to bring up the magnifying glass, for example, and I'm going to move it over here on the cursor over the little iWork.com icon, and I'm going to click on that, and it's going to change the color to the color that it sampled under the magnifying glass. And I'm going to simply drop that onto my shape. Next thing that I can do inside the color picker is I can come to the sliders, and instead of seeing things as a circle with shades on the side, I can choose these as sliders. I'm going to choose the RGB sliders, the red, green, and blue sliders, and I can change my color now by dragging the red, green, and blue sliders left and right, and that will change my actual color. And I'll just drag that into my shape again, and I'm going to add this one to my little picker down here at the bottom. Now, if you happen to know a value, if you knew, for example, that your color was red 230, and it was green 50, and it was blue 190. You could just type those values in there and you would automatically get the color, and I'm gonna save that down in my color picker again. Again, I can drag this from the color picker into my box at any time. There's another way to look at things, which is by palettes, and so there's a couple of different palettes. If I click on this tab, my palette by default is the Apple palette, which has 11 colors, but I can also do the web safe colors. These are the colors that are guaranteed to work in any web browser and I can click colors, and you'll notice that I have numbers next to these. These are the hex numbers, and so if you're working with a uh, hex colors in your web page design, you can enter the number indirectly. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to find 6633F, which is right there. I can type that web value in, and then I can just drag that onto my shape. I can also choose crayons, which brings up the colors that are over here in the crayon picker. In this case, there's nothing in the palette to take a look at that is matching 6633F, and so I'm going to clear that out. Now I've got my crayon colors here, and they've got names to them too, and so if I wanted to make this box mocha, I could click on mocha to change the color and drag it over into my box. Now the next thing that I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to come over here, and this is going to show me a spectrum. And the spectrum is showing me the range of colors, and they're laid out as if I smeared the colors across a canvas and I can click anywhere in the spectrum and I can choose colors. I don't have any other choices here besides spectrum, that's what this one shows me. So I can pick a color here and I can drag my cursor around and I can see the different colors. Now you'll notice something we didn't talk about yet, which is the opacity. I can also choose the opacity of a color. And so you'll notice that this box here splits from dark blue to light blue. This is what the color is, this is what it's going to appear as with the opacity setting that I've uh, chosen. I drag that in and now I've got a semi-opaque box. You can tell it's opaque. I'm going to make another shape. I'll make another square. I'm going to move the square over here to the corner. I'm going to choose send to back. When I choose send to back, you'll see that I can see this green square through that. That's because my opacity is at 50%. If I made the opacity 100% and drag that over, then I wouldn't be able to see the box through it anymore. And finally, we have the crayons. This is a way to pick the colors by simply clicking on those crayons that we saw before. And we'll notice as I click on each of these crayons, it shows me the color. And so I can choose a color, and I can drag it over there. And that's all there is to the color picker. Remember, the color picker is available on almost all of the OS X applications.